In Creo Parametric 8.0, probably the biggest enhancement in assembly mode is the ability to embed components in an assembly using the inseparable assemblies functionality. If I go to the operations overflow menu, there is an inseparable assemblies command down at the bottom of the overflow menu, but right now it is grayed out because by default, it is not activated. In order to activate the functionality, go to your options and then configuration editor. I will click on the find button and the keyword that I will use is insep or you could type in the full word inseparable and then check the box to search the descriptions. But I happen to know that the name of the option is inseparable underscore insep underscore ASM underscore operations. And by default, this is set to no. When you set this to a value of yes, this will expose all inseparable assembly operations like embed, extract, and create embedded. Let's click on add change and close out of here, then click the OK button. I do want to use this functionality in the future, so I will click yes to save my config.pro file with the updated option. So now when I go to the operations overflow menu, inseparable assemblies is available. Right now, only make separable is not grayed out because I don't have anything selected. So again, taking a look at my assembly, this is a line replaceable unit for a drone and I've got a bunch of commercial off the shelf components, like I've got an autopilot. You can see when I expand this particular assembly, when it was imported, it brought in all these other individual parts. Similarly, I have a power distribution board with a couple levels of hierarchy. You can see that we've got a lot of components listed inside of there. And another one that I will take a look at, I've got an electronic speed controller, which similarly was brought in as an assembly with a hierarchy. Let's jump over and take a look at the drawing for this particular box. And you can see that we have quite a few components in here. I've got indentation in my bill of materials. So again, you can see the structure of the PixHawk autopilot and oops, wrong button on the keyboard. Uh, here we have the PDB with its structure. And so again, I've got a lot of different components I really don't want to see in my bill of materials. Here is the electronic speed controller. So again, I don't want all this information in here, but these components were already imported. Let's go back to the assembly window and then embed these components so that we no longer have that situation. And since I'm down here, let me expand I have a pattern of those electronic speed controllers. I'm going to select this level here in the model tree, and then I can right mouse click and hold. And because I turned on that config.pro option, I have the inseparable assemblies menu available from the right mouse button. And here I can choose to embed this. And that took a few seconds and the icon next to it in the model tree has changed. This indicates that this and everything inside of it is now embedded in this particular assembly file. Let me collapse this and collapse this. And since this component has multiple instances in the assembly, it had the same action applied to all of them. All right, let's do that a couple more times. Let me go to this level in my PDB right mouse click inseparable assemblies embed and in this particular case it automatically hopped over to the drawing window and gives me a warning it says hey the system detected that an embed component operation after the last save of this drawing may have impacted the detailing on these components you may need to adjust the detailing of the components all right thank you very much if you don't want to see this warning again you can check the box let's click ok out of there you can see that my bill of materials is already shorter but my work is not done let's hop back over to the assembly that i was working on and you can see once again we have the different icon in the model tree and indicating that the component is embedded as well as the components underneath there and let's collapse this and do this one more time let me select 
In this case, I'm going to grab, using the Shift key, all these components underneath my autopilot, right mouse click, inseparable assemblies, embed, and the icons change. Let's collapse over here. Let's jump over to my drawing window. And now again, we get the warning about the embedded components. If I take a look at my table for my bill of materials, this is more of what I want. Here I have my structure. I've got the top level. I can see, okay, here are these different off-the-shelf components. The ESC has a quantity of four. And then we have our subassembly and the harness within the subassembly. So that way I'm getting the information that I want. If you embed these components and then save those files, you will only have a single file underneath there to manage. And this helps keep a lot of junk out of Windchill, out of your data management system. Let me go back to the assembly and let's take a look. Let's say that we decide that we no longer want certain things to be embedded. For example, if I go to the Pixhawk, I can say, hey, this particular subassembly, I happen to know that this is for the housing. I can right mouse click on this and then choose inseparable assemblies. And here we have the extract command. And in this particular case, since I have this object out on disk since it already exists it's asked me for a new file name for this so i'm just going to type in something a little different to indicate this is the case let's click the ok button and now the symbol next to it in the model tree looks like the standard assembly icon if i expand it we can see that we have the components located within there still as embedded components I can right click on the assembly. Let's go to inseparable assemblies and we can then make this separable so that the components underneath there are no longer inseparable. And we have a warning window with detailing impact it says, hey, non-session assemblies may lose visibility state of annotations shown from the selected component upon extracting. Also, existing drawings may lose detailing for the selected component upon extracting. So again, we're getting some additional information in here, and you can click for details. Let's click the OK button. And now we're going to get a dialog box because again, we have an issue because I already had part files with these names saved out on my computer disk. If I had gotten rid of those files, I would be okay. But in this particular case, it's asking me to come up with a different name for these components. I think this one is the top of the case. Let's change this one. I will call it autopilot case bottom. Just give it a different name. Hit the enter key. Now I can click the OK button. And these two components are renamed and they're back to having the standard part symbol. So again, there you can see the various functionality that you have for inseparable assemblies where you can embed components. You can make your different inseparable assemblies separable, and you can also extract components out of an inseparable assembly. So again, this is just a great way, especially for managing commercial off-the-shelf components and components that you import. Speaking of import, let's take a look at some additional options that you have. If you go to File, Options, and then choose Data Exchange, this is where you can set up your various different profiles for the kinds of files that you want to import. For example, I have a profile that I use for importing step files. I'm going to go to the drop down list for import and open. Let's say that you're doing a lot of work importing and exporting from other CAD software. For example, let me scroll down. What am I looking for in here? There we have it SolidWorks. Many of you are aware that I do a comparison series, so I do use SolidWorks data. Let's click on the Setup, Import, and Open Profiles. There is a new option here in the dialog box to import inseparable assemblies. So again, that's a great way of cutting down on the number of files that you end up generating when you're importing assemblies. 
All right, let's click OK out of there and OK out of there. So that is a little bit of a, an introduction to the inseparable assembly functionality that you now have in Creo Parametric 8.0. I'm going to go to the skeleton that I created for cabling. If you take a look in the model tree, here we have an external copy geometry feature for the panel. I have a shrink wrap that grabs a number of the electrical components. And then I did a merge inheritance feature for one of the parts in the autopilot. One thing that was also changed in Creo Parametric 8.0 is making so that you can right click on any data sharing feature and you'll have the option to open a reference model or retrieve the reference model. In this particular case, I can choose open the reference model because I have the reference model open in my current Creo Parametric session. Same thing with the shrink wrap. If I right click on it, I can open the reference model. And with the merge inheritance feature, I can right click and open the reference model. Let me close those other windows where the information is still in session. Let me close the drawing. Let's now go to the subassembly and close it. And I will now erase not displayed to get all of the different components that were referenced by those data sharing features out of my computer's memory. So now when I go to these different data sharing features and right click, here we are given the choice to open the reference model. So again, whether you have in this particular case here, we have retrieve reference model and open reference model and here we have open reference model. So being able to retrieve the different models, you have different commands depending on what is in your computer's session at the time. All right, third enhancement to take a look at. Let's say that I am creating a component that is going to be used to mount a power transmission, but the power transmission is a really big assembly. To show it to you, let me open it up real quick. So here we have the power transmission. You can see that there are a lot of components in here, a lot of subassemblies within subassemblies. But for the work that I'm doing, I need to create a data sharing feature to reference the external geometry in order to make some mounting. I don't want to bring in all the information. If I go to my view manager, I have different simplified reps. So for example, I have a simplified rep that is just for the housing. And in this particular case, if I right click on it and choose edit definition, we can see that this has a lot of components excluded. So it would be a lot easier to make a data sharing feature like an external copy geom or a shrink wrap feature from the simplified rep rather than having to bring in the entire assembly into session. That was not possible in Creo Parametric 7.0 and earlier. Now you are able to make data sharing features to either the automatic rep or a user defined simplified rep. Let me show you how to do that. I'm going to close out of that assembly. Let's close out of here. Let's erase anything that is not displayed. And so right now, if I go to file open and then in session, the only thing that I have in my computer's RAM right now is this one individual part. Let me cancel out of the file open operation. Let me turn on my datum plane so I can show you how pretty they look in Creo 8.0. Now I want to create a shrink wrap of that assembly. I can go to shrink wrap and this is going to be an external shrink wrap because I have nothing else open. I'm not creating the shrink wrap in the context of an assembly. Let's hit the open button. And now when I select what I want to shrink wrap, from the open drop down menu, you have the ability to open the automatic rep or open a user defined representation. I will choose that housing representation and then click the open button. And I locate it using the default constraint. 
and then if I go to the subset button, you'll see that we have very few components that are going to be shrink wrapped inside of here. And I can even turn off individual ones from here as well. So for example, yeah, I know I don't want the skeleton. I can say ignore that. Or if there's like some other small rinky dink component that I am not interested in, I could say hey, this component over here, let's ignore that one as well. So that way I'm reducing the amount of information that I would be bringing in via shrink wrap even more. And the nice thing about this, when you edit definition of your external copy geom or external shrink wrap, it's only going to bring in the components that are referenced. And so let's change or keep outer shell. Let's go to options. I'll crank it up to a little higher quality level. Let's ignore any construction bodies. Uh, let's see. Everything else here looks good. Let's hit the check mark. And there we have our shrink wrap that's brought in. Let me turn off my plane display. And so now I have enough visual references in order to create my new component for mounting this. And so the great thing about this, again, is that when you are creating one of these external copy geometry features or external shrink wrap features, you're able to bring in a lot less information into your computer session when you're creating them and when you're editing definition. So it just simplifies the process, especially when you are trying to manage really big, large, heavy assemblies. So there you have it, three different enhancements to assembly modeling in Creo Parametric 8.0. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.